Hello everyone, FunshotX here. Welcome to my new series involving space engineers and scripting. I want to give you a tutorial, an example, a demonstration on how you can put your own scripts and write your own scripts even uh, and put them into space engineers and accomplish really complica complicated tasks. Things you can't do with just a normal timer block or manually adjusting settings. Um, we're going to be able to do some really, really cool stuff. Now, the first things you have to know uh, when scripting in Space Engineers is there's already a ton of scripts available on the Steam Workshop. So if you want to do something, chances are there might already be a script existing. So you can just go download it. And you can also use those existing scripts as a resource to learn. So me being new to Space Engineers scripting, I went and downloaded a few scripts, read through them, figured out the system, looked at the wiki, and I think I've got a good handle on it now. Second thing you need to know is that scripts in Space Engineers are written in C Sharp. So um, you kind of have to know ob object-oriented programming. Uh, if you know Java, you kind of already know it. It'll be a really easy transition. Uh, but if you're used to something like Lua, it might be a little bit more of a jump. If you don't know how to code at all, I suggest you um, come back to my tutorial series after you've gone and looked at a few other just generic C-sharp tutorials on the web some from something like W3Schools or some other website. So here we are at FunshineX Laboratories. It's awesome. Look at this world. It's beautiful. <laughs> little uh, lab built on the hill. I'll take you along for a little tour. Inside, we've got a uh, security station here. Uh, as you enter in, whoever sits in this chair can uh, make sure you pass security clearance to come inside. A few programmable blocks, some LCDs, stairs leading up to the ceiling where there's nothing up there. That's for future expansion. Uh, we got some hu cubicles in here with a few monitors, timer blocks, controller, or, uh, programmable blocks, that kind of stuff. Some more LCDs up there. Those are pretty cool LCDs. I like them a lot better than the vanilla ones. Here's another cubicle. Uh, over here we've got a little uh, more console area, a little um, design table for uh, hashing out some complex designs with the team. <laughs> another little more private setting, and then here's like the main control center for the laboratories. All right, so let's enough of that. Let's get actually into some coding. What I hope to accomplish today is give you an intro to coding and scripting in Space Engineers, enough that you will be able to write Hello World to an LCD. That's right, we're going to do a Hello World tutorial. Typical, anytime you want to learn a new language, script, environment, anything you want to learn, you might, you might as well learn how to write output Hello World or, or some kind of text to a screen because it's going to come in so handy later. A lot of what we're going to do involves writing text to a screen. It just... Uh, it makes the game more immersive and uh, gives you a lot of control on what you would display. So before we do start scripting, we need to know two vocabulary terms, and those terms are the grid and the terminal system. Grids are actually pretty easy. Anytime you create a new ship, large or small, or a new station, you are creating a new grid. So if I come to the G menu, if it loads up here, hit new small ship and place it on the ground, that is now a grid. If I add blocks to it, I can add whatever blocks I want here. Oops, well, I didn't actually put them in my thing. Let's actually get some. So we've got a uh, block there. I've got to rotate this sucker. I've got a block there. What else can we add? Maybe a thruster. <laughs> you get the idea. This is all part of a single grid. Now, if I separate the ship by doing something like that, I now have two grids. They cannot talk to each other. They are on separate grids. They have no knowledge that the other one is there other than the physics interaction between them. Uh, if you give them like an antenna, I guess you can kind of talk to each other. Um, but they are separate grids for all intents and purposes. If you use a conveyor, not a conveyor, a connector or a merge block, you are merging grids, multiple grids into one. Connector is kind of more of a temporary connection, where a merge block is kind of more permanent, even though you can release the, the connection. Um, so that that's grids in a nutshell. You'll need to know that if you want to start coding in Space Engineers. Second thing I said is the terminal system. I'm going to clean up my mess and go inside. The terminal system is what it, basically the GUI in Space Engineers. Whenever you come to a block and hit T or K and it opens up this window here, this is the terminal. It says right up here at the top. So the terminal system is all the settings and configuration stuff that you can do within the terminal. That means things like jumping, things like placing blocks, um, what else? Those, those are more like in the world system or the player system. Things that are, you don't access by the terminal. 
coding and scripting in Space Engineers can only affect the terminal system, which means I cannot move my character, I cannot kill a spider, um, I cannot really drive a ship other than kind of controlling a, um, a, a yeah, you know, I can't like you know do mouse input that kind of stuff. Um, that's all the player system, and we are limited in space engineers only to coding and scripting against the terminal system. Now within the terminal, there's multiple tabs that you guys saw: inventory, control panel, production info, blah blah blah. Terminal system only affects inventory and the control panel, so I cannot queue up um, things in assembler via code. I can turn the block on or off because that's part of the control panel, but I cannot check what's currently in production and I cannot queue something production, cancel anything, can't do it. I can't get access to the info tab and change any of these settings via coding. I cannot join a faction, leave a faction via coding. I cannot send chat messages via scripting and I cannot uh, create new GPS points. All right, make sense? Cool. So that's what you're limited to. And now let's talk about, even though we have limitations, what we can do. Anything that you can do in these things, two panels, you can pretty much do in script. So I can do things like move inventory, move things into inventories, assuming they are connected. I can um, turn things on and off. I can get groups and affect entire groups. Um, I can open doors. I can turn reactors on and off. Uh, what else can we do? We can start timers. Um, we can write to LCDs. So anything you can kind of do in these two tabs, you can pretty much do in scripting with a very a few subtle um, uh, discrepancies that we'll, we'll come up with as we get to them. Cool. Well, that covers everything you need to know. Let's actually start writing scripts. <laughs> so what do we need to do to write a script? We need to build a programmable block. That's this block here. And that's all what all your scripts are on. Each programmable block can hold one script and one script only. So if you want to have multiple scripts, you need multiple programmable blocks. Also, each script is only executed once when you hit the run menu. There is not a way to run a script and leave it running for hours and hours always executing. Even if you, if you well, if you try, Space Engineers um, counts all both the number of lines of code and how long it takes to ex execute. And if you go over whatever their limits are, you get an error message that literally says your program is too complex and it quits it. <laughs> I love that. It's like, no, too complex. Don't run. So you can do things like sleep or wait or, you know, execute something a million times. You, these scripts are really designed to start, run really fast, and end. So that's kind of as you're designing what you want to do, think of that. If you want something to run multiple times, you simply combine a script with a timer block. The timer block can say, wait five seconds, execute a script, call myself, so that I wait five more seconds and do it in a loop over and over and over again. Okay? So, to write a very simple script, we've got the programmable block. We want to output a message to this LCD. Let's get going. Here we go. So here's the programmable block. I'm going to first name it, just so I know what program is running on this. So we'll call it Hello World. Okay, there we go. And we can edit here. We also can turn this block off so the script will not run. That's pretty handy. Uh, we also need to make sure the owner of the programmable block, which is set to me, but remember in creative it gets set to no one by default, needs to be the same owner or belong to the same faction as the block you're trying to affect in the script. So if I'm trying to write to an LCD that's owned by no one and the program is owned by me, I can't do it. Okay, so I need to make the LCD owned by me, put it in the same faction, all that kind of stuff. So there we go. Um, we can also run the program manually. We can pass in arguments, and that's pretty cool. So if you come into edit mode, you'll see the start of a program. All it says is void main. Main is the entry point for your script. It's called every time you click the run button. It's called only once and executes till it's done. That means anything you put outside of main is... Um, considered a global. Um, if you create a variable, something like an integer value, I'll call it test equal to zero, that is now a global value variable. It's executed before the script runs and then never again. It's just retained as its value. So if you want to initialize a variable to something um, like a, a starting state or a starting value, set it outside of main and then inside main, you know, whenever main is called, you can you know, edit it and it won't get reset and all that kind of thing. 
We'll worry about that a little bit later because we don't need to know that to write a script um, to affect the LCD. First thing we're going to do, you're going to need to know grid terminal system. <laughs> now, now you know exactly why I tried to explain what a grid is and what the terminal is because this object in Space Engineers is pretty much the source of everything else. It's your main class to get access to the grid terminal system. Makes sense, right? Um, from here, use you know period um, to get access to its members and, and properties. Um, we want to call a method to get a specific block. Now, are there, me there are methods to get all the blocks in the grid, and there are methods to get specific blocks, either by name or by other you know values, like things that are turned off, things that are damaged, uh, rotors that are currently rotating, you know, kind of like that. And we'll get into those search algorithms later. But the easiest one to use is get block with name. All that means is find me a block in the grid system that has a specific name and you pass in a string. I don't know what the string is now, so I'm going to leave it as an empty string. That returns an I my terminal block. That's pretty crazy, the naming schema. But I, the I at the beginning just means it's an interface. If you don't know what interface is, don't worry about it. If you do, grats to you. <laughs> so don't worry about the I. Um, my, you don't really have to mean any either. It's just kind of the naming schema they've used. But it, what you do need to know is this is a terminal block. And that's the class, so this the interface basically, um, that describes what properties and methods you can expect this block to, to, give, to give you. Um, and it's pretty limited. A terminal block, it can tell you the name, it can tell you if it's on or off, it can tell you, I think if it's built or not, like if it's actually, like if someone's tried to destroy it, and if it's being hacked. I don't know what that is in the game. I don't know if that's something they were going to add and never did, or if they have plan in the future to add hacking to the game, but who knows. Um, but we don't want that. We don't want a terminal block. We want an LCD. And that is of type I, my text panel. Text panels, LCDs, all use the same uh, interface called my text panel. Now, how do we take the I, my terminal block and make it an I, my text panel? We just type as. Now, as long as what we get back can be cast, as is a cast operator, um, to a text panel, this will work. If we get back a reactor, because we type something like reactor one in here, and we try to cast it as a, a text panel, we're gonna get an error. But as long as we know that we're getting an LCD that can, you know, that is a text panel, we're good to go there. In C sharp, you need to put every uh, semicolon at the end of your statement, and we need to actually store this as something. So I'm gonna come back here and say I my text panel. Oops, I use camel case. C sharp is case sensitive. If you don't know that, uh, call it display, and equal to what that whole thing. So we need to know what we want to put in here. I'm going to hit check code. Check code is a compile. It just makes sure that there's no syntax errors in your program. Um, it won't verify things like, you know, that you actually do have a block with that name or you can even access it, that kind of thing. Um, that's going to be a runtime error. Um, remember, an exit does a save and exits the terminal. And the one we wanted to get was this one right here, which is called wide LCD top. So I'm going to copy that and come back in here. And we can paste it right in there. Okay, so now we, we should have a reference um, to the text, the LCD in the, the variable we called display. Now we want to write to it. So we do the display object that we've already saved. And it has a method called write public text. And we pass that a string. And we can optionally pass a parameter to append or not. Um, if you leave it out, it will by default um, overwrite. You know, it will not append. It will, it will, it will get rid of what you had and, and only put this text there. Um, or if you write false, that will, oops, should be a comma there. That will mean don't append, overwrite. If you write true, that will say just append to the end of what it was already there. So we're just going to leave it blank because we don't care what was there before. And we're just going to type in hello world there. And hit check code. Should give us fine. Remember and exit. Then we can just hit run and come over here and hello world. It worked. All right, that might not have worked on yours if you're following along. Make sure you come into your LCD block, come down to the bottom and say show text on screen 
public. It, I think it defaults to none and you'll see something like offline and you're like, what the heck? Just make sure that says public, okay? Um, everyone rewrite as the default. You could change the, you know, what, the color and all that kind of stuff if you want. But that's basically it. That's how you take text and write it to the screen. I'm going to leave it at that. We're going to come back next time and learn a lot more complex ways to write to screen and then what we might use that for. We don't, you know, Hello World's kind of boring. That doesn't help us in Space Engineers. Um, but yeah, this was just a, an intro to give you an idea of, of what scripting is like in Space Engineers and um, and hopefully you you like it. <laughs> if you do and you want to see more of this, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Um, let me know what kinds of things you've had, you know, ideas that you have that you say, oh, it would be cool if there's a script that did XYZ. Put it in the comments below. Um, but I intend to cover, you know, reading and writing LCDs, um, controlling blocks such as pistons, rotors, um, uh, thrusters. Uh, what else do we want to do? We want to calculate things, <laughs> move around inventories, so, you know, move um, ores into reactors, or I mean, to refineries, uh, move ingots into assemblers, move components, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so all that in, in inventory management. Um, yeah, and we'll get, we'll get through all that, and uh, I'll start putting some of these custom scripts into my Let's Play world, um, because there's a lot I've really wanted to do in my Let's Play world that I'm just like, oh, I hate how this script works or I hate how the default game works and I want to change something. So that's going to be it. I hope you guys liked it. We will see you next time in Funchinex Scripts Space Engineers. Catch you later. Bye.